So the Jewel Rad custom loop NR200P has been working pretty well as my personal gaming system lately. I've got a couple of updates and mainly a new toy to play with here on the channel, so let's check it out. Welcome to Machines and More. The Dual Radiator modded NR200P has been running for about five months now and it's still working pretty well. After all the testing, I did swap out the 3900X for the 5600X and temps are really, really good for that CPU for what is essentially a silent system. Now for gaming, this is the better chip anyway, and I'm really, really happy with the 5600X. I did do a baseline run before I make the change right here. So just for reference, the chip with the EK velocity block runs at just under 60 degrees, and this is at a delta of about 30 degrees over the coolant temp when the GPU is idle. It's not bad, and I really have liked the velocity blocks for their price to performance ratio and certainly these temps are already within the realm of pure entertainment rather than anything meaningful in terms of performance i mean with the setup the chip can easily be clocked to 4.8 gigahertz on all cores while still maintaining a practically silent system but there's not a real reason for doing that right it's, it's well beyond the point of diminishing returns but good is often never good enough if you like tinkering with custom loops i've been pretty curious about the blocks from optimus and i managed to snag one recently they've been pretty difficult to find in stock so i'm pretty stoked about this one so pretty decent packaging uh, this one i have here is the foundation block. This is the satin aluminum version with a nickel plated cold plate assembly. This is a clear acrylic on the top. So pretty, really nice finish. And this one has kind of an industrial concrete like appearance. And generally for maintenance, I tend to shy away from raw copper blocks, even though this block is available with a black aluminum and raw copper finish, which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so you could order that if you wanted, if, if you prefer that look, but I just am um, sticking to nickel plate for my first go with this one. Overall, really impressive build quality and appearance. There's no RGB on this block, but really not a biggie. Uh, for mounting, it does come with standoffs and mounting nuts. And this one will just look uh, this one will just use the AM4 stock backplate, so that actually will yield pretty good motherboard compatibility. So it's worth noting that based on the instructions uh, it comes with, that Optimus seems to suggest that a horizontal orientation for the block may be better. I did fire off a quick email to Optimus and they were pretty quick to respond. So uh, from what it looks like, it sh there shouldn't be a big difference. So I'll just test it with the stock configuration which is the inlet on the bottom and outlet on the top. The block comes with Kingpin cooling thermal paste. Uh, typically for th coolers, I'll test with the stock or the included thermal paste, but since I am interested in the performance of the CPU block itself, I'm gonna use the same thermal grizzly paste as I'm using on the uh, EK Velocity block. And typically for custom loop goodies, a lot of users will choose their favorite paste anyway. So let's just keep things the same now instead of introducing yet another variable. And this is pretty high quality paste though that comes with the block, so you can't go wrong with this either. Now the marketing material for the block and from Optimus suggests a pretty sizable performance advantage, something like five to seven degrees better than the competition. Not sure what the competition is, but thermal transfer between the block and the IHS is very, very important. And it's often the limiting factor if you have a big rad or lots and lots of rads. So that'll be the main claim I wanna to test today. And so let's just drain the loop. I'll take the EK block off, fill it back up with this guy on, and let's see how this works.
So all done, I swapped the blocks and since the orientation changed a little bit to the inlet at the bottom and outlet at the top of the block, I did need to tweak the tubing a little bit, but not a huge amount of rework there. I just shortened the tubes a little bit. I like that this one uses a stock AM4 backplate. EK blocks use a proprietary backplate, which might cause interference with some other boards. So I did let this one run for a while, flush out all the air bubbles, and then I re-ran the blender render with identical pump and fan speeds. And is it dramatically better? Not really. If anything, it's insignificantly different. The temps are functionally the same. I did record the coolant temps and the CPU temps. All are normalized for a 22 degree ambient room temp. And interestingly, the EK performs actually ever so slightly better with a tighter gap between the coolant temp and the CPU temp, indicating better CPU block thermal transfer. Now that's interesting because the Optimus block has super, super tight fins, which you might think makes for better performance. And certainly the DDC pump that I'm using shouldn't be held back by that tight spacing, but at least from the testing thus far, it's functionally the same. And so that just goes to show how good the EK Velocity block is for the money. Of course, the Optimus block isn't too much more. It's not badly priced at all. Certainly not for something made in the US and carrying a 10 year warranty. It's just not necessarily better than the Velocity block. Now the good news is you really can't go wrong with either. The EK Magnitude blocks will retail for about twice as much. They're definitely better, but they're only like a degree or so better than the Velocity block. So a little bit of a penalty there in terms of pricing. At some point, probably when it's time to clean this block, I'll pull it and I'll do another test with the cold plate and the top plate rotated 90 degrees. But based on my correspondence with Optimus, I'm not sure that's going to make too much of a difference anyway. But I do really like this block and I like how it looks. I'll run it for a while. And this guy here will probably go with the 5800X for an, another upcoming test system build. Anyhow, sorry, I couldn't tell you that the Optimus Foundation block is the greatest block ever in terms of performance, but hey, at least you know it performs on par with the EK Velocity block and you know how it stacks up in terms of performance. Hope this info is helpful. Please subscribe and stay tuned for additional build updates here and give a thumbs up if you liked it. Check out some of the build components linked below. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you again soon.